Here it is, the piece de resistance, uh, Pokemon Diamond. Now, I was really happy when I managed to grab this. <sighs> right, I finally got around to recording this video. I've just been so busy this week. I've just, well, I've been too busy or too exhausted, so I've just really struggled to get around to actually recording it. But anyway, so my game find. Now, before I actually get into why I actually found there, first of all, let's give a little bit of context. Now, the NEC is like a massive convention center and one of the biggest in the UK. This time, they were holding a toy fair. Now, the organizers is called BP Fairs, and you can look up their website. I'll have it in the description or whatever if you want to have a look at it. It's not sponsored, and they organized it so that different sellers and different companies companies and just individuals who just want to sell their stuff and all come together and sell their things and so it's like in this massive warehouse essentially and they had all sorts of things toys and gaming related I mean if you were there for you know uh, model cars or model trains you were absolutely sore there was so much stuff there's ridiculous they had like Hot Wheels they had He-Man stuff they had Transformers they had like the whole lot they even had something like VHS tapes there but anyway I was there for the retro games they didn't have many stalls they had 550 stalls of toys but they only had a about I think maybe 10 somewhere around 5 to 10 of just retro games uh, and even then most of the time they're selling toys and just retro games on the side so obviously it's not the best place to go for retro games but even then I still managed to find quite a bit of retro gaming stuff so I was quite happy with that and if anything because most people aren't going there for the retro games it's a bit easier for the people who are and also I had to go in there really early because there's two tiers you see so there's going in at 8am or like the early bird ones you had to pay a bit more to go a bit earlier and then at 10.30 is when it officially opens normally and so that's a bit cheaper to get in but obviously there were so many people there, there was literally thousands of people by the time at that point so I was really glad I got in there early I was a bit skeptical but my uncle was like no you need to get in there early and I was so glad that he told me that so that we could get in there anyway enough waffle Right, here we are. We're at the NEC. Why am I filming this? I don't know, but there we are. And I look like a white wally with my uh, microphone on, but there we are. God, this is completely barren. There you go, there's the sign thing over there. So we know where we are at least. Look at that. So we've got some Lego sets over there, even though it only falls in horses game there. <laughs> and apparently SK Electrics with no cars. Because that's really helpful. Hello, you're in the video now. You and your nipple cam. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just no, recording wait, it as well. If you don't mind. I'm really awkward with this okay, stuff. I am not a reseller, I'm pretty much a collector who's just having to downsize. Mm -hmm. That's complete. Yeah. So it's been modded, it's got a lot of like, this in, and he's got games in. I'm like, yeah. mm. and I bet he's Ooh, gonna very nice. It's very not nice. as nice as the backlight, granted, but... Yeah, the backlight. Yeah, backlights are nice, Cheers, buddy. those IPS kits are quite expensive. Yeah, so I've heard. So this is just your own stuff you're This is my stuff, yeah. So we've just got out now. So if you can tell there, I've got a whole bag of stuff in there. So I wondered why there was like no people, because it was like really quiet. That's why, because they're all coming now. So I'm really glad I went in early now, even though I barely woke up for it, but this was great. Look at that. I guess that's why they make you go in earlier.
Oh, there you go. The sun's gone a little bit now, so you can see me a bit better. I don't know if I should have my head up here so you can see me better or have my head down here, but I don't know. Anyway, literally just come out of the NEC now. My dad and my uncle are still in there. They're like the big toy collectors where I'm literally just in it for the uh, the video games, which I'll show you in a second. Sorry for the uh, audio quality and the me quality and the video quality because all the quality's gone. Literally just come out of it and I thought I'll give some first impressions. So you have to use cash. I think there's only like five out of the like 500 stalls actually allowed you to pay with card. Everything else was cash. Can you imagine getting like, you know, 300, 400, 500 quid dollars, whatever it is in cash, walking around a massive convention. Nothing's going to go wrong there, is it? But there was a lot there. And like, even though it's mainly a toy thing, obviously, like there was an absolute ton, trains and cars. So if you're really into trains and cars, there is plenty of those. I literally just went there for the retro games, all right? So if you're there just for the retro games, there's actually quite a bit, maybe 10 at most that had retro game stuff. But here are some good ones. That's Mario Kart 8, got that for six quid. And F-Zero got that for five. Actually, no, yeah, I got them for five. I got two of them for tenner. So not bad at all. My dad managed to grab an N64, 45 quid, 45 quid. That was an absolute bargain for an N64. It's usually about 80 at least. So not bad at all. Let's get on to what games I found. So I've got it into three different categories. I've got the Xbox games, the Nintendo games, and the PlayStation games, just to make everything a little bit simpler. I should probably bring this a bit closer, actually. First game here, Rocket League. I already have this on the PS4. Obviously, it's gone free to play now. So I had it on the PC and the Switch when it came to free play. I wanted to get a physical copy, so I bought the PS4. So why have I got the Xbox one as well as a physical copy? I don't know. Basically, the whole point, I picked it up as kind of a joke to go to the seller. Oh, I'll have it for a quid because it's free to play and it's kind of pointless now. But I ended up getting it in a bundle, so that whole joke kind of went out the window but i have it again now it's in good condition it has this little poster thing which i quite like it's a shame that you know xbox one ps4 they don't really come with manuals anymore because i would have liked to see a manual i don't know if you can tell but the disc is actually a little bit dusty, which is very odd. I don't know why it's dusty. I mean, it probably hasn't been played, that's why. Though, for the Xbox 360, we have Banjo and Kazooie uh, Nuts and Bolts. Now, this is a pretty infamous game, especially if you've seen the JonTron video. I think it's worth it for four quid. Like, even if you really don't like this game, I'm sure there is something in it you could find for four quid's worth of enjoyment. Um, but again, this was all case and box everything. Got all the manuals, even got a little poster there. And it's in pretty good quality. I've actually been wanting to play this for a while. I think I played a little bit of it on Game Pass, but I like just having things physical anyway because you never know what might happen. Another four quid. This time it's episode three. Until a couple of weeks ago, I didn't even know they even made a game specifically based on the film. I obviously knew they had the Lego games and stuff, like the Lego Star Wars. I don't know if it's good or not, but it does actually look quite decent. And I think for four quid, especially because I would assume the Xbox version is the best version, I'm quite happy with that fine. All case in box, got the manual. Again, all of these, I don't know if they've been tested or not. So I'm a little scared to go back home and see if they actually work. But a lot of them are really nice sellers and I'd imagine they're the kind of people who genuinely care about their stuff so i'm not too worried about that i don't think i've got a particular bargain or anything but i'm looking forward to playing that one thing i did think i got a really good bargain on was this shenmue 2 uh yeah again in this one the case isn't exactly in the best condition but i saw this and one of the other game shops i went to had it for like 15 quid so for three i thought this was like the bargain of the century kind of thing you know what i mean and then it turns out not really i was a little gutted on that one but again that's essentially a 40 percent discount so when you think of it that way it was quite good this one isn't in the best condition though and i think it's actually missing a disc i don't know how well you can see that there's a two there so i'm a little bit concerned now i might have been scammed on that that's the end of the xbox games so now we move on to the nintendo games uh, so first of all, this is Kirby's Dream Land. I'll put that up close to the camera. Unfortunately, I've only got it as a cartridge. I would have really liked it, pacing box, everything. But the problem is, with Game Boy games, SNES games, N64 games, all of those games in kind of like the late 90s era, is that they were all made out of paper. Unlike the Mega Drive, or the Genesis, if you're in North America, that had plastic cases, which were a lot more durable, they were a lot more susceptible to breaking or to being thrown out, or all kinds of things. And so it's very rare to find a lot of these games proper casing box. But still, Still, I've been wanting to play Kirby's Dream Land for a while now. For those of you who don't know, this is the very first Kirby game. And you can tell because Kirby is white and not pink. Because they actually hadn't settled on his colour yet. Neat thing to know, I guess. And I'm really looking forward to playing that. Although, I, I don't have an original Game Boy. I have the Game Boy Advance. So I'll be playing on that, probably. Now, next one, Pokemon. Now, obviously, trying to find this case in box is like trying to find diamonds. It's going to take you a while, at least. And it's not going to be cheap. This one, I wasn't expecting to get a case in box anyway. Because it'd be stupid money for it. I haven't actually played much of the Pokemons because of how 
how expensive they've always been. So I'm glad I finally got one. I managed to get this for 20 quid. And I thought that was an absolute bargain for this kind of game. Um, Kirby's Dream Land I got for a tenner. The guy originally wanted 30 quid for it. He let me have it for 20. So that was quite nice. But then I checked later on. It was only worth 24. So it wasn't that much of a discount, I guess. I'm so happy I got it. I've been meaning to play it. And next up, this is probably the best one. And I'll probably put this in the thumbnail and everything. Here it is. The Piece de Resistance. Pokemon Diamond. Now, I was really happy when I managed to grab this. Normally, this goes for about 40 ish. 25 I got it for. 25 quid. And this, unlike the other two, is case in box. It's really hard to open for some reason, though. We've got the manual in there, which again, nice, it actually has a manual. Obviously, we've got the cartridge. It'd be kind of scary if you didn't have the cartridge. And the case is not in the best condition because it does look definitely scratched. But with Pokemon games, especially at 25 quid, you can't take too many luxuries on it. So I'm really glad I got the DS era because the DS era is one of my favorites. Here's another really good deal. Uh, New Super Mario Bros for the DS. Normally, it goes for about 18, 20 quid, something like that. I got it for 10 pounds, so I'm really happy with that. All case in box, all very nice. And even the case is actually in quite good condition there's a couple of scuffs around here so it's not the absolute best condition or anything but i am really happy i got that then we have sonic mega collection you know we've got all the classic sonic games on the back here one and two three spin ball etc etc i've actually got uh sonic one and two on the mega drive i've really liked two i'm not the biggest fan of one i really want to get three i've heard three is the best in the series there it is a little bit closer up and then we have the absolute classic we have smash melee this wasn't really that much of a bargain i mean not only is the box in not the best condition if i look on the inside well i think we're missing the manual we've only got the uh, nintendo legal information there so we do have the disc at least that's something but i think i spent roughly 30 on this again i got it as a bundle so I don't know exactly how much I spent. I am a bit gutted that I spent 30 quid and it wasn't even that best condition. And finally, the final Nintendo game I got, Mario Kart 8. So actually, I managed to grab this for a grand total of five pounds. Normally it's eight, but the guy also did a bundle as well. I got it essentially for five and I'm really happy with that. If you want to play Mario Kart 8, you may as well get the Wii U version. So if you have a Wii U and you haven't for some reason picked up Mario Kart 8, get it on Wii U and I guarantee it'll be worth it because if you get it on Switch, you're looking at about 40 quid so it's like 60 dollars or whatever as opposed to this one which you can literally get for about 10 dollars and for, again for a fiver this is just an absolute steal absolutely fantastic game for that price there we go the manual this actually doesn't really have that much of a manual mostly just again stupid nintendo legal stuff i don't know if i'm missing a manual here or not and especially because wii u games are blu-ray discs it means they're a lot less likely to scratch so that's all the nintendo stuff and finally we're on to the sony stuff so, first of all, Crash Team Racing. Now, I haven't actually played the new one yet. They didn't come out on PC, which is, again, that's PC's my main platform, if you haven't noticed already. I have a Steam Deck and everything, so I'm very much a PC gamer. I also like to have a physical one as well. And I'm really glad I got the first uh, Crash Team Racing. £12, not too bad. I don't know if I could have got it cheaper. I think it's about 15 roughly, normally. So, most of these weren't, like, amazing bargains by any means. Got the manual and got the disc. The disc isn't in that great of a condition, though, unfortunately. But it's all there, and... I thought it's not too bad, although this keeps them flying out, which is a bit annoying. And then the next one, another PS1, Phantom Menace Episode 1. I actually did know about this um, as its own game, and it does look a bit strange on the back. I have seen people play this, and, it's, and so I'm interested in playing that. And the box is in really, really good condition, because with these PS1 games, the case breaks so easily, and I'm really glad about that. Apparently, it's even got Jewel of the Fates on CD, so I could just listen to that, if for some reason I'm not going to use the internet to listen to it. Here's the manual, uh, that's in pre condition. The disc, it looks in much better condition on this one. Doesn't really look like it's been used all that much. Right, this is about the fifth time I've tried to record this bit, so let's see if it works properly this time. So, the final game in the PlayStation category is Final Fantasy XV Remake. Now, I've been really mean to play this, but I've wanted to play it on PC, because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a PC gamer myself. On there, not only is the port not that great, it might be better now, but when it initially came out, it wasn't that great. But the main problem is the price. They wanted £70 for it, which is like almost $90, something like that. And that's ridiculous for a game like this. This is a good game, don't get me wrong. Wrong, but I ain't paying that, you know what I mean? With this, £10. So I was like, I'm having that. And yeah, the case is in quite good condition. It's a shame because there's no manuals in here anymore. Some of the older stuff have manuals, but a lot of the newer games don't have manuals. These are basically just ads. I mean, there's ads for the Avengers game, ads for Final Fantasy 14. And it's just like, I don't want ads here. I want a manual, you know, I want my like, cool artwork and that kind of stuff. But anyway, look at this. I mean, it even has two discs in here. Each disc is roughly about 50 gigs. So you can tell just how big the game is here. And yeah, 10 quid, quite happy with that. I, yeah, overall, the 
the NEC was really cool. The BP Fairs event at the NEC was really cool. It's the first time that I had done something like this in person. I even met another YouTuber called The Retro Ghetto to go check his channel out and his video out if you want to see another perspective on it because he knows a bit more about it than I do. And that was really cool meeting him. <laughs> As I was trying to talk to him, I was like fumbling everywhere and I was dropping my things. I had a straw that I dropped on the floor and <laughs> trying to get all my money out. I was fumbling everywhere and I'm a massive muppet like that. And I managed to get pilot wings as well, four or five of us. been absolute nightmares trying to record this uh, outro. So anyway, if you want to go and see another video, go check this one here and I will see you there.